Quality Laboard. You most likely watched our first video on wrist injuries and have already started with a home program. This should include active exercises, most likely various fist positions, hook fist, straight fist, and regular fist. Then wrist motion, which most likely includes wrist extension with a fist and wrist flexion with an open hand. In demonstrating these in our first video, we made it very clear that when you work on wrist extension, you should try to make a full fist at the same time. Even though this is much more difficult at first, make sure that you comply with the one hour rule. That is, that you should do as many exercises as possible as long as your pain or swelling is not worse in an hour or at least two hours after exercise has been performed. Remember, swelling is your enemy. So we want to do everything we can to control that. I'd like to remind you to keep your hand elevated, to sleep in the correct sleeping position, to use good sitting posture, and to work on doing your exercises at least three times a day, five to ten times each, working up to doing your exercises every two hours. Today I'd like to bring you a little bit further in your exercise routine and teach you a little bit about what we call passive range of motion. Passive means pushing so that you actually give some type of assistance to the exercise. In our initial exercises we only taught you about active. That is you were using your own muscles to perform the exercise. Today I'd like you to move a little further so that you are using your other hand or possibly a tabletop, etc., to force some additional motion. Let's start with the hand exercises. If you do have some type of stiffness or loss of range of motion in your fingers, it's very important that you regain this as soon as possible. You may be watching this video when you still have a cast or an external fixator. However, you can of course begin working on your hand range of motion. Let's take the hook fist that I taught you about earlier. If you can perform full motion, that is, with these big knuckle joints or the MP joint straight, if you're able to pull your fingers down into this position, then you have full motion and you should just stick with active range. If you aren't able, maybe you just have a little lag so you can't straighten out these joints fully. You may just be able to do this. Or maybe you can just barely pull these fingers down into this position. Then I suggest starting with passive range of motion first. That is where you push your fingers and assist your fingers first. And then moving to active range of motion. Let me demonstrate. You would assist in stretching into this position and then you would follow with active motion. The same applies to all three fists where you would assist if you cannot make a full fist you would assist with your other hand next into bringing this into a full fist and then later follow it with active motion. Straight fist you would assist and then bring into full motion. Most important is, of course, your wrist motion. We'd like to start with some passive or pushing to the wrist itself into both extension and into flexion. Now, it's quite different when you're pushing your wrist into extension. You'll remember actively, when you're doing your active exercise, we like you trying to make a fist and lifting into extension. When we're stretching or performing these exercises passively, we like you to stretch with your hand open. The pictures from your handout show this exercise or the prayer exercise. You can start here and just bring your elbows up 
Why don't you practice this with me? This is normal range of motion. If you can't go this far, don't be distressed. Just start and go as far as you can. You maybe can just go about this far. You can do the same exercise as pictured in your handout by placing your hand on a table or against the wall and pushing into that position. This is the exact same exercise. You just might find that one way is easier for you to do than another. You can do the same exercise by pushing with your hand in this fashion. Some people find that if they apply a little traction to the wrist prior or during this exercise, that passive motion is not as painful. The other direction that's very important is wrist flexion. That would be bending your wrist downward in this fashion. Again, you can use your other hand to push your hand into flexion. Or you can use a tabletop or a wall to do that. An upside down prayer stretch is often effective. Do this. You can do this with me and practice this. In our prior video, I talked to you about using heat prior to exercise. Paraffin baths, hot packs, even a warm shower where you hold your wrist or your hand up against the shower. This can be helpful in warming up your hand and preparing it for exercise. Often more motion can be achieved if the extremity is heated. Or be very careful about swelling. Many people have significantly decreased pain with heat only later to have their pain increased. And that's because it often increases your swelling. That's why in therapy often we will heat up your hand, do passive range of motion followed by active range of motion and sometimes even strengthening, and then use ice or Job's pump to decrease the inflammation, to decrease the swelling after therapy. In a sense, when you do exercise, especially if you're doing passive range where you're pushing the joint and stretching the joint, in a sense, you increase the irritation to the joint. That's the only way to increase the range of motion, however. So we have to use effective means to decrease that irritation and that inflammation afterwards. Up until now, your exercise program most likely has included active range of motion at least three times a day, following the one hour rule, but working up to every two hours performing exercise. You perform your exercises five to ten times each, keeping this in mind. You've been using ice or possibly contrast baths following exercise, especially if you've had problems with increased pain or swelling. Today, we've introduced to you a new type of exercise, passive range of motion, which means pushing or helping with the other hand to gain the range of motion that you've lost. We've also introduced to you the use of heat before exercise, keeping in mind the benefits which or decreasing the stiffness and pain prior to exercise and eventually helping you increase the range of motion. You have been warned of the side effects of heat, that is that heat may increase swelling and this must be watched carefully. For this reason we usually ask you to use heat approximately one time per day and prior to your exercise session usually not more than this. Now your exercise program should include the use of heat prior to your exercise program one time per day, followed by passive range of motion or pushing range of motion. Then you'll continue with your active range of motion exercises that you've been performing already. These should be performed every two hours five to ten times each using ice or contrast bath following your exercise program to decrease swelling if it occurs. Keep in mind especially the use of cold as medicine. The benefits of cold are to decrease pain, inflammation, irritation, and swelling. Even though a side effect of cold is to increase stiffness, this is not as important if you've already performed your passive and active exercise program prior to using cold. 
many people constantly re-injure themselves because of the way they sit and because of the way they sleep. You want to make sure you're not re-injuring yourself day by day, but that you're actually allowing room in those tight spots. In addition to kinking the nerve, if you're in awkward postures or sleeping in an awkward way causing compression on the nerve, you're also causing decreased blood flow. Your blood vessels are similar to hose. If you're kinking the blood vessels, then you're not going to be able to get rid of the swelling that's caused by your injury because the blood vessels have to be clear to do that. Also, the blood vessels are what provide nutrition or food to your injured joints or your injured hand. And also, that's what removes the waste products. So, very important for you to sit, stand, and sleep properly. I'm going to talk to you about posture today. Sleeping correctly, sitting correctly. If you do these incorrectly, you are usually hanging on your ligaments, which will cause increased pain and often lead to compression and numbness and tingling. We want to stop the num numbness and tingling, especially when you're sitting, when you're standing, when you're sleeping. So sitting posture, let me go over that first. First thing you want to do with sitting posture is try to sit an inch taller. Every hour, you should try to get into a perfect sitting posture, overdo it for a few seconds, and then relax. And what I say to do is to sit an inch taller, go into a double chin position. A double chin position doesn't mean doing like this or doing like that. You're looking straight ahead and you're pulling back just like if someone had put a match to you. And you're pulling, you're retracting your neck back. Go into the double chin position. You're sitting an inch taller. Your shoulders down and back. Your back is not arched. I'm doing everything right here except for I'm arching my back. That'll cause lower back problems. Your buttocks, you squeeze it together and you tuck it forward like this so that your back is straight. Most people have a problem with lordosis where their back tends to arch. So if that's your problem, you want to make sure you squeeze that buttocks and you bring your back into a straighter position, sitting tall. Then you do that for a few seconds and then just go into a relaxed position and you can continue on. If you do that every hour, you'll really get out of the habit, which most people do, of having a forward head posture, shoulders forward, back rounded. This type of position causes lots of problems. You cause pressure here on the nerves, underneath this, you cause pressure all up and down your back. So, get in this position quickly and then relax. Then sleeping posture is very important. Anything that you do eight hours at night can cause problems. So if you can even change your position so that you're sleeping correctly one hour out of the eight, you're going to make a major difference in your pain level. You want to eventually get so that you can sleep correctly all night. The first thing that I want to look at is your neck posture. Look at this forward head posture. When you're sleeping, a lot of times that's exactly what you're doing. If you're sleeping on a lot of pillows, look what you're doing here. And I'm exaggerating, but you're pushing your shoulders forward and your head up. Why does that abnormal position? This is exactly what you're doing all night. The same thing if you're sleeping in a curled up position. If you can kind of come on. You have your shoulders forward, which is bad. You have your arms bent. And really, you have your neck forward. You're sleeping like this all night. You're causing compression here. You're bending the elbow, causing compression there and often bending the wrist. Just think if you sat like that all day, what type of problems it would cause. So we want to help you get in the correct position at night. The first thing is to have some type of roll behind your neck. You can buy those special pillows that they advertise, but just as good as any special pillow that they try to sell is to take a regular bath towel to roll it up and either Position it just like this, or you can slip it inside a pillow that I'll show you. I really like 
for people that have problems to try to wean themselves into using a no pillow if possible. Because what this does, usually when you're sleeping just like this on your back or with the pillow, you have support here and under your back, but there's no support under your neck. If you're having neck problems, this just leaves your neck hanging. Here you roll up the you roll up the towel to just the right amount so that it supports your neck equally with your head. You feel the same amount of pressure under your head as you feel under your neck. Now, at first, this may not be real comfortable flat on your back. You may never get used to being just flat on your back. I prefer this because this actually stretches your shoulders back and keeps you in perfect People have been used to sleeping on two or three pillows and to get them to sleep just like this is a big change. So you want that towel roll a little bit bigger because here, this size on me doesn't quite support my neck yet. So I need a little bit bigger so I feel equal pressure behind my head and behind my neck. So this is a very good way to sleep. You can even take it and roll it up. Some people with necks that are really giving problems will even safety pin like a brace so that they're not sleeping in awkward position at night. And if you do get, so this is exactly what you like, you can take the towel roll and slip it right inside the pillow like that. The other important thing about sleeping is to have some support under your knees. If you sleep with your knees straight and you have back problems, you'll only exacerbate the pain. So it is very helpful to have some type of support under your knees, maybe a pillow or a roll that supports your knees. If you have hand problems, which most of you do, we like to have your hands elevated above your heart. And so we like to put a pillow on each side supporting your hand. One pillow really doesn't elevate your hand over your heart. I would really prefer two pillows so that your hand is over your heart. Also very important, remember we talked about kinking the hose, that the hose is not kinked. This is a wonderful position. It's not kinked in any area. The first area for it to become kinked is here in the neck. If you're sleeping with it twisted, it will become kinked there. Then under the collarbone, if your shoulders are forward, it will become kinked there. Here, they're stretched out. There's lots of room for the nerve to go through. Here in the elbow, if your elbow's bent, wrists are bent, it will become kinked there. But here you see that the blood can flow easily and the fluid can be taken out of the hand easily and all going towards the heart. So this is your absolute perfect position with this under your neck. If you have to sleep on your side, there is a way that you can do a lot of this. You can sleep half side line. You may put a roll or a couple of pillows under your back to allow you to lean back on it. You still keep the towel roll under your neck, and here you would use a pillow, because if you don't, your neck would be pushed down, awkward, and would be twisted. You want your neck straight, so you can use a pillow under your head. Your arms can still be straight. You may use another pillow in between, having a pillow behind your back that you can lean back on instead of being curled up in this position, which is very bad. You can lean back, so as you lean back, you do open up at least one shoulder, so it's not going forward. Your arm is still out straight in its position, and it is above your heart. So this is a good position to try. This would be the hand that is injured, the hand that's on top. Now this hand, I don't like its position as much because it's below. Okay, it's below your heart. This isn't going to help for swelling. Also, this shoulder is being pushed forward. So you are kinking the hose up here. But it's still a lot better for both hands than sleeping like this, like we so often do. I often also have something in between my knees which will assist in helping you with back problems, that you have something between your knees which keeps your legs straight. We want to look at every body part being straight. That way we don't sleep in a twisted position. These are the only two positions I really recommend. But say you would have to sleep on your stomach partially during the night. 
Again, we want to look at not having our shoulders forward and having our arms, arms straight. You would look more, at, again, staying out of this. This is horrible. Because both shoulders are forward. You would look at having this shoulder, especially if this is your affected shoulder, pull back. That you would sleep with a pillow under your stomach so that you could sleep half side lying. And your neck, you don't want to sleep with your neck twisted. You would try to have your neck in as straight as position as possible. Your arms out as straight as possible. Again, another pillow. It's like it did. It did. It did. It did. Out like this. So this is not good, but it sure is a lot better than sleeping like so many people. When you go home, remember to perform your exercises five to ten times a day, remembering that one hour rule. Also, do your contrast baths at least one time during the day while doing your exercises. Keep your hand elevated as much as possible, even if you have just very minor swelling. And try your best to sleep correctly. This should give you a good start in therapy. If you are in therapy at this time, please do not skip any appointments. Always arrive on time so that you can get the maximum benefit from your appointment. Someone is scheduled to work just with you, and if you arrive late, you may not get the attention that you need. Please call ahead of time if you must miss or must be late, and reschedule so that you are sure to get the amount of therapy sessions suggested by your physician and therapist.